Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. FreedomsPhoenix.com Okay, so let me just introduce myself. I'm Lisa Krubler. I'm a consulting criminologist, independent. And um, I've just written a book called Crossing the Line, When Cops Become Criminals, about corruption in our South African police service. We have two police services in this country. The one is the Metro Police, who belong to the municipalities, so in other words, the big cities. And then you have the National Police Service, which is the South African Police Service. This book was basically born out of my PhD, which I completed in 2005, purely on police criminality. And basically, there isn't a category of crime on our statute books that corrupt cops are not involved in. Right? So it's anything from bribery to murder. Police corruption is, is, is so much a fabric of policing um, that you never get rid of it, but it can certainly be managed. And as South Africans, we haven't even started yet. The most disconcerting part of the corruption and criminality problem within our police is the fact that it would appear that those that can are not, the decision makers are not doing anything concrete about it. What contributes to criminality in the police in this country? And it's a lot of aspects that are universal. Okay, for example, individual factors. Um, a lot of times, the actual quality of the, of the individual joining the police is not up to scratch. Cops grow up with gangsters. They Very often they're friends. And... Um, they get drawn into corruption, into assisting gangs, um, either through greed or being threatened. Other factors that are uh, really a microcosm of society um, within the police are drug addiction and alcohol abuse. Then you get your, your occupational factors, your, your task environment. For example, the very nature of policing allows or gives people, individuals, a lot of power and that gets abused and that that plays out in this country a lot through police brutality wrongful arrests very often it's police who don't quite understand their duty they don't have the self-confidence to to exercise their powers correctly um a lot of it has to do about has to do with respect respect through violence um, and that also goes hand in hand with patriarchy which is big in our society and another factor that contributes within the task environment is, is opportunity. There is a lot of opportunity for corruption in the police every day, particularly in high, high gang, high crime areas. If you have a lot of corrupt police in that precinct, all right, what's going to happen is they perpetuate the criminal activities of the gangs. And just as a simple example is they, if they are protecting a drug dealer, all right, or they're supplying a drug dealer, which they also do, um, you're perpetuating that criminality, that particular criminal stream. It's, it's never going to go away because you're keeping the gangster out of prison, you're perpetuating the drug market, and you are selling the image and, 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 and whatever the badge stands for. And the third contributing category is the policing organization itself. And when you're looking at the organization, you're looking at the quality of management. You need to look at recruitment, first of all. Who are they letting into the police? How, what is the quality of the training? For example, we have very good detectives, for example, but we don't have enough. And we don't, they don't get trained enough. I think we've got something like 20 something percent who've never been on a detective course. Yes, it's fundamental. It really is, it's basics. A rookie cop does not understand the pitfalls waiting for him. And he needs to know in detail what could possibly happen to him once he is a serving policeman in terms of corruption and what to look out for and how to avoid it. To the best of my knowledge, it's not common. It's, it's not common to see people filming the police. Um, I have heard of many incidents where filming has happened and it hasn't ended well for the person doing the filming. They would either have their cameras smashed or they would be attacked. We are lucky when, when
when people opportunistically capture something on usually cell phone camera of an incident. For example, the dragging of that taxi driver behind a police van that was completely opportunistically captured. So when that happens, that's great because then the public knows. What I'm trying to say is the importance of filming police action. You do get a lot of media filming police operations, although legally you're not allowed to film police, ongoing police operations. But whether it was done legally or illegally, I'm not sure, but look at Andres Tertani, the uh, political activist who was shot dead in Fixburg. And that was all captured on film. Um, but strangely enough, the faces of the police who shot him were also captured on film, but none of them were convicted. Not one of them was convicted for that. Private security industry is huge in this country. Um, because basically we cannot depend on the South African police service to protect us. We can't. Uh, South Africans who can afford it, unfortunately, um, are, are, what should I say, fortunate enough to be able to afford private security, have no option. It would be wonderful not to have electric fences and high walls and alarms and that sort of, it would be great. But you know that you have a big chance of being burgled or robbed or something if you don't have those kind of measures in place. You will be. The nature of the crime is not always a case of let me take what I want and move on. Um, there's a lot of violent stuff involved too. So yes, we are a very fearful nation as well. And we, if we can, we need to do what we can to protect ourselves. And also that, on the, on, on the other hand, poor areas that cannot afford private security, you will find have vigilante um, incidents quite a lot. They, just, they basically get fed up and they will attack somebody who they perceive to, to be terrorizing them in a criminal way. It's a, it's a small percentage of people that are holding this nation hostage. It really is. I mean, you, you cannot just blame something like poverty because the majority of poor people are not criminals. So it's not fair to say, okay, because there are high levels of poverty, that's why we have high levels of crime. That, that is not the case. It is things like syndicates, your gangs, people who are in and out of prison consistently. We have a high recidivism rate in this country. Um, we have a, a consumerist culture. Here, yeah, we have people who drive around in fancy cars and wear fancy clothes and always appear to have money are idealized. They are. And um, unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who, cannot, who can only aspire to it. They cannot live it. So they live it illegally, or, or they acquire illegal, illegal acquisition. Things like our violence, our socioeconomic factors cannot be sorted out overnight. Things that can be done in the short term. They must clean their house out first before they start looking at the bigger picture. Then have a total review of everything policing, from promotions to recruitment to um, disciplinary procedures, um, grievance procedures, complaints, every aspect of policing. Police are arresting their colleagues. They are doing that. And they're doing that a lot. So you've got a lot of police going through the, the justice system and, and being convicted for, for their crimes. But what needs to happen is they need to start preventing these things from happening. They need to start putting controls in place to prevent the guy from being drawn into the corruption in the first week he enters. Um, we have too much politics in our policing, way too much politics. We have a national commissioner who's a politician. And just policemen and policewomen must police, not politicians. The policing expert, Prof. Morris Punch, says, if you're policing in a democratic environment and you're denying corruption or you're covering it up, you are not accountable. And if you're not accountable, you are illegitimate within the eyes of the public that you are professing to police. <laughs>